He uh, has spoken around the world in over 30 countries. He currently teaches at his hall down in London and studied uh, in Point Iran for several years. He graduated in 1998. We're fortunate to be here with him tonight, and I invite him now to come and discuss the events of Ashura and everything thereafter. Hello. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, praise be to Allah who deserves it and salutations be upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And his Holy Progeny who deserve it the most. Um, just as I was sitting here, I was making some notes and I'm not going to go through the 20 pages that I've tried to write. Um, before I begin, I would like to apologize uh, from all of the people here that my English is not as good as the people who have spoken before me. Um, but I'll try and speak for the greatest personality that has changed my life and the life of many of the people around the world. There are many people who just changed back to Islam when they had left Islam because of Imam Hussain al -Islam. Especially in the subcontinent of India and Pakistan, especially in many of the Arabian countries, where people were people had become communists because of probably people like myself who did not deliver their message. However, whenever they found out about Imam Hussain, they came back to Islam because they saw a personality like Hussein ibn Ali serving at the highest level in the in the history of Islam. Before I mention things and events that took place on Ashura on the 10th of Muharram in Karbala. I would like to give a little background to Imam Hussain al -Salam himself and to Yazid and then Karbala itself. We have seen in, in the Holy Quran where it says that Man qatala nafsan bi nafsin wa fasadin fil ard faka'annama qatala nasa jamia. Whoever kills another person without a reason has killed the whole humanity. That is the message of the Holy Quran. And on the other hand, the Quran says, whoever saves one life has saved the whole of the humanity. No matter what Yazid was, if he has killed even one person innocently, and I would like to request all of you to think, even when going back, not into the infallibility of Imam Hussain but at least in the innocence of this person who was a grandson of the Holy Prophet. Even if we do not believe in his divine message and do not believe that he was a divinely guided leader. Was he not an innocent person in the plains of Karbala? Then Yazid, will he be a person that we would respect or a person that we would curse? Who had killed not only one innocent man, but children, even other elderly men who were not there to do jihad, but to only accompany Imam Hussain Hussain is a personality in Surah Fajr. I will only give quick references that you can note down and check yourself later on. Surah number 89 is a surah that is regarded to be the surah of Imam Hussain And the last verses of that surah were recited today in the beginning of this session. That talks about Imam Hussain. If you want to refer to other surahs, Surah 18. Surah 18 The faith. That is another surah that many of our Sunni great scholars have mentioned that this surah is for Imam Hussain But only two verses that I would like to indicate upon. One in the third chapter, Surah Al Imran, verse number 61. That is called I am Ubahala. And if you want to look into the history of Ubahala, which I do not have the time to go into, then please do refer to the books of commentary on the Holy Quran and the books of history where the Holy Prophet only took Imam Ali, his daughter Fatima, and his two grandsons, Hassan and Hussein, to oppose all of the Christian world, to show that these five can equal the mankind, the humanity, the biggest religion in that time and today. These five people can equal everyone. They can represent all the Muslims. 
let alone the companions, even the other household members of the Holy Prophet. No one equals and is parallel to these five personalities. The household of the Holy Prophet. Please look into that incident. The last verse that I would like you to get upon. Surah Safa, the surah that has come straight after Surah Yasin, Surah number 37. I would request that you read the history and the story about Abraham, who had been asked by Allah to have been ordered in his dream to slaughter his son, Ismail, Ishmael, which has been mentioned in Torah and the Bible and in the Holy Quran in a number of surahs, not once, not twice, but a number of places, Surah Hijr mentions it, Surah number 15, other surahs mention it. But more importantly, in Surah Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we stop Abraham from slaughtering his son, and we replace it by a great sacrifice to be coming in the future, Look at all the historians and the people who have written commentaries on the Holy Quran. They all mention that this person who replaced the sacrifice of Ismail is Hussein ibn Ali. And only want to mention the famous poet of Pakistan, Allah Iqbal, who died in 1938. He says in Farsi, Allah Allah, wa bismillah ida, ma'ana ilidhe adim, amad kisa. He says that what a great father and what a great son Allah has made in this world. Father who was a dog beneath the bar of Bismillah, that is Ali, and the son who sacrificed everything to save Islam. And the meaning of Ridhi Adin, the great sacrifice. That is Imam Hussain al salam the one that even Quran talks about very highly of. Look into the verses that talk about Imam Hussain. For God's sake, do not forsake him because you have not heard of him. This is Imam Hussain in the Holy Quran, and there are many other chapters. But just for the, the short time that I have, now look into the Hadith and the, the, the books of traditions, Hadith of the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet says, Al Hussein Minni wa Anamin Al Hussein. This is in Sahih Bukhari in the Manaqib, the merits of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Go and check and read the, the words of the Holy Prophet that he has said about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. No one else you will find that Imam that the Holy Prophet talks so highly of. Even Imam Ali, his, his brother, his cousin, his grandson Hassan, and his daughter Fatima, when he talks about them, he says, Ali yum minni wa ana min ho. Fatima to minni wa ana min ho. Hassan yum minni wa ana min ho. But in this particular place, wherever the Holy Prophet said, Ali is from me and I am from him. But for Imam Hussein, the Holy Prophet started with Hussein and ended with Hussein. Al Hussein yum minni wa ana min al Hussein. I am from Hussein. Hussein is from me. And I am from Hussein. We can all understand how a grandson can be from a grandfather. Do we not? The grandson, we all understand how a grandson can be from a grandfather. But how can a grandfather be from a grandson? That is the point to be noted. The Holy Prophet says, Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. Hussein is from me because he is my blood, he is my offspring, he is my grandson. But I am from Hussein because my reality is Islam. I delivered it and Hussein saved it. Because Hussein saved it, that's why I am from Hussein. The Holy Prophet says, remember, O oh Allah, he prays after that hadith, O oh Allah, be pleased with the man who is pleased with Hussein. And in other words, in another hadith he says, O oh Allah, be pleased with the man who Hussein is pleased with. So wherever you want to see, who is radiallahu anhu, who Allah is pleased with, then you should see the history wherever Imam Hussain is pleased with the person, then Allah is pleased with him. Because the Holy Prophet's dua would never be rejected as being promised in the Holy Quran. <coughs> this is from Sahih al-Bukhari, the first hadith I mentioned. And from Sahih Muslim, a reference just for all to remember, Al-Hasan wa Hussain wa Sayyidah Shabaabi Ahl al-Jannah. 